You can hear me? Yeah. Um, but I won't start talking. I will start like this. So how long better did you start on road? So all of them are sharing with one another, and all are hanging with one another. So they are just one group. We pass the ring for signal meant that they must get color. Så blir det så, ja men det är ju de som är där. Så han tar man, ja men det är säkert han där. Han är svartklädd med luva på som är där och hänger där i flera timmar hela dagen. Men det är oftast bara vanliga fotbollsspelare som inte har någonstans att vara. Pol- äh, ungdomarna här, de är vana med att politiker ljuger. Så då tänker de, det är ingen mening med att rösta. Och det följer kanske efter dem hela livet, så då kommer de aldrig rösta. De ser att många här inte har varit engagerade. Okej, okay, men nu visar folk att de är engagerade och de borde låta oss få vara aktiva inom vårt område. Framförallt så är det väl så att man har, att man känner att man bor hos en fastighetsägare som tar hyresgästen på allvar. Och har man då ett engagemang, en grupp, speciellt då en grupp som man har ett avtal med centralt via hyresgästföreningen som man ska samråda med och sen inte bry sig om vad den här gruppen säger, alltså, en grupp, alltså den, den lokala hyresgästföreningen då som jag tillhörde förut. Vi var ju liksom värna ju om vår våran boendemiljö, mm. det är det det handlar om. För att folk skulle trivas, hälsa nya hyresgäster välkomna till exempel. Då. Men det var väl inte speciellt intressant från fastighetsbolaget. Something is totally wrong on this slide. Um, there's missing, <laughs> but you have to imagine. What you now see on this slide is uh, about 40 different faces. Because what you just saw were three fragments from two out of more than 40 short video films that I recorded and published between 2011 and 2012. And each of these films mediate as you saw, one or several persons describing their one-to-one -one experience of everyday life in two residential areas uh, in a small city just outside Stockholm, Sundbyberg. This entity of the many films, of course, could be seen as a complex portrait of um, the two neighboring residential areas. And this is Hallonbergen and Ör, Hallonbergen being one of the million program areas. Um, but in fact, this uh, possibility of making this portrait was just a side effect because it was not my intention from the start. This is me walking in a one of the largest parks in Sundbybay. I was there because I was invited for a residency at the art gallery in Marabou Park. And and I had initiated a new work, Park Lake, taking its point of departure in the park as notion and the park as public space. So this is why I'm walking here, um, just south of the two residential areas. In fact, it's all behind the trees that you see here. This park, in reality, makes Sundby Bay a walkable town. It is a vast conglomerate of many green areas encircling and tying together five different uh, residential areas of the city. But, as I have soon found out, for the inhabitants, it is understood the other way around. The park is what actually keeps these urban areas apart from each other. Because in spite of being one of the smallest um, municipalities in Sweden, um, Sundbybay, in fact, is one of the most socially segregated ones. Some of the richest people in Sweden live here, but 500 meters from the poorest, um, such as, for instance, the residents of Hallonbergen. And there is no contact across the green divides. And the same green divide being situated in such a vicinity to the center of Stockholm actually gradually become very valuable land. So valuable, in fact, that six of the absolute major building companies in Sweden collectively have negotiated a prepayment for land reservations in Sundbybay about 14 years before I take this walk in the park. 
They had obtained the future right not only to build a lot of apartments, but also to pinpoint the desired building sites within the city. And all this exterior to any democratic process and without at all having to address any other issues in the planning, such as an environment or social issues, but simply having the right to fill out non-built areas with new and primarily private housing. I think many of you know this kind of image from wherever you work. As a part of this deal, as you can see on this map, um, and this map is also, there's a funny thing, this uh, missing uh, red areas and it looks really strange and has turned around. So don't look at the map. Um, um, between the two areas is a road. This road was planned to become a huge new um, urban area that was beamed down in between the two areas, taking a big chunk of this park. Um, and it would do nothing about all the problems in Hallombergen and only take almost all the green areas in uh, Ur. And I learned that this new plan was shortly to be presented to the public in a public uh, hearing. And this would be done through uh, uh, the local paper, an ad on page six calling for a meeting on Thursday, uh, between four and six, uh, where there would be a Q&A session, and then you would have some weeks to, to uh, respond in, in a written way. So, the fragments of film that you just saw are made in relation to this context, or is trying to contest or challenge this context, because they were aimed at disturbing the logic behind it. Through a collaboration with the city architect, who showed deep concern about the long-term effects of this deal with the builders, uh, my Park Play project was permitted to step in and take on the role as a parallel referendum for this one hearing session. So, on posters in many languages all over the residential areas, the public was informed that they had a second possibility to make their voices heard. They could call in and ask for a visit from me, and then I would come to their house or their place, and at the time that they chose, and record with my camera what I had asked for, and that is the areas seen from their window. And these recordings would then be edited as separate short films and presented to each participant before they would be posted on YouTube. So my aim was to document their experiences, their concerns and their critique, not only of the plan, but of their, them telling about the area and the way you saw in the clip. But at the same time, also map aspects that were not included or simply left out uh, in the conditions for the plan the builders had made. When the participants encountered their own film. For many of them, this also altered their own view of themselves. They, most of them belong to a great majority that never had chosen to take part in any political discourse. It was something they left for others to do. And now suddenly they found themselves on the screen doing precisely that. For some, this opened new doors. These young men, for instance, um, suddenly accepted also to be interviewed on national TV about the project and found that they kind of liked being representatives for all the youth in Hallenbergen. But the, the films also altered the image of other, the other persons living in the same area. Because you could now see your well-known area from the window or from the eyes of someone whom you normally might never have noticed or somebody you didn't even want to notice. For some, this was very uplifting. But for others, this was felt as a threatening insight, a sudden awareness of having to share the influence of the future of the areas with others that you didn't really accept as your neighbor. 
and one group of primarily elderly Swedish participants from Ur ended up organizing themselves separately from deep worry that I and Park Play would lead uh, to uh, something that their settlements would have to have closer contact with the immigrant uh, uh, inhabitants of Hallenbergen. But for both these reasons, uh, for me, unexpected demands were pronounced, asking for a direct meeting between participants, asking for time to continue a dialogue directly together. So, four days of discussing and working together were hastily invented. We negotiated for a large architectural model that uh, ended up being paid by the builders, and it should be large enough to equally attract and divide participants, making it possible to have a, a dialogue space around it. I also asked for a number of freestanding architects and planners, and they were invited to support and qualify the dreams and the critique of the participants, but also to translate it into the language of power, to challenge the plan of the builders and the plans of the municipality by making an equally clear plan, a, a counter plan, um, a coherent version of the thoughts of the participants. And this counter plan was finally rendered to the city in May 2012 and uh, subsequently accepted as a hearing statement. And this is the part that I skip today. I won't talk to you about the content of the plan. The reception of the counter plan by the city council led to the builders' plan uh, and their development scheme being stalled. And meanwhile, we were asked to further elaborate a concrete version of the counter plan. And this was to be done as an additional face of park play. As a condition for me participating in this, I asked for this phase to be realized in very close collaboration with the city planners and under its proper title, Park Play Parliament. Because there were municipal elections coming up, so I was a bit afraid that all of the results were just going to be used as varnish uh, for the politicians. So, in this way, a project secretariat from the planning department was, so to speak, inserted into the art project. But with the start, with the intention of gradually outgrowing me and the art project, and then to uh, gradually take over the relations, the subjects, the knowledge, and uh, keep it within the planning. On this slide, you see two images. Um, that I regard as basic principles or models of operation for a park play project. It, one, is to the, one side is the organizational mode, and the other is a specific meeting format. Both of these, in combination, I hoped, and it also turned out to be the case, could secure this state of exception from the normal municipal procedure and legislation. It could se secure... Uh, non-hierarchical space for slow, very slow, and very gradual exchange of actual knowledge, but also of open critique and open conflicts. And it would, when necessary, offer a workspace for possible proposals and solutions. And it was done um, as an active collaboration between locals, professionals, and builders. But at the same time, everything that was done in this space would be a part of the actual planning of the areas. So that is, I, would, I was trying to keep the process in a non-plan, but leave no way out for the city when it was concluded. I found a place for this negotiation in, in the shopping mall of Hallenbayen. There was one half open corner of the mall, very close to the cafeteria. It was what you could call a Teheranwag. It was no longer the shop it used to be, and yet it was not uh, adapted for a new purpose. But in fact, even looking empty, it was in full use on a daily basis. It served as an informal, free of charge, you could sit there for free, meeting point for the football players and for the, some you know, uh, informal social groups who met here every day. 
So one could say that this was already a full functioning state of exception, a territory owned by the residents themselves. We painted the corner in the same colors as the metro station, pink, and we divided it <coughs> by flexible, excuse me, <coughs> I will use this. by flexible rubber curtains. And for months we met here, three evenings per week. And then also we held group meetings, daily meetings, screenings, uh, coffee, breaks, whatever, different things. On the walls I posted traces of all activities and illustration and in particular models of all elaborated proposals. But I did this which I think is really important for me at least, without squeezing out the existing social life of this room. The rubber curtains allowed us to divide the room so that they could sit where they always had been sitting and we could be on the other half of the room. Day by day, this very coexistence in the space became its own imaginary. A sort of multi-ownership a continuous discovery or mapping of local forces, local initiatives and possible solutions that would fit with the real life outside the space. So, also this place became a temporary lighthouse, sort of a pumping heart, and uh, gradually also was understood as a common identity of the two areas or an idea of a possible common identity. And again, uh, this is a distorted image of the former plan, but this is kind of before and after. Uh, what you cannot see in this before and after is that um, the, the different areas uh, this, uh, designed for new settlements are radically moved uh, from one position to another. And the difference is that in the builder's plan, all the new settlements were in the green areas and around the road. Uh, along the road, and in the new, they are in, in, in the outskirts of the existing, growing towards each other in sort of a yin-yang um, movement. And this would then leave the green areas to still be used as a walkable space, as a contact between, and they were reactivated through in different ways, so that the green space would have, um, would be a motor for Hallenbergen to step further into the city. Uh, I forgot to say that you might see that these, you can discern some text on this plan, and it's layer upon layer of information that was gathered during the process of this dialogue. So these are all the critique and all the dreams and all the history of the place, all the routes, if you want to, and there's also information such as down here it says this is where Hasse uh, fell off his chair while, while trying to kiss a girl. Or, so it's, it's all kinds of information. In planning, there is a recurrent image of the time um, line from A to B, because in planning, it is a focus on get, how to get there, how to realize it, to make it more and more detailed and pass through the different phases of a municipal um, decision chain. In Park Play, we defined another timeline um, of a range of projects that would be meaningful to realize at the same time as a densification process or turn it the other way around, that would make a densification process meaningful um, because it would be at the same time um, possible to uh, make solutions for serious current problems in the areas that had been pointed out in the films and in the dialogues. i just give you two examples of, of this. Um, and it's even blurred, I see in here, but anyhow. Two examples, one would be the parental organization, not linked to the school, just parents wanting to do something about the youngsters that are engaged by external forces into narcotic uh, sales and so on. And also, this association played a crucial role in the time of the uproar and the car burnings of uh, most suburban areas in Stockholm and no cars burned in Hallenbergen at all. Uh, 
The other is the reinstallment of a beloved and missing communal house at the hilltop of Hallonbergen, Topstugan. And this is now almost finished, even though the roofs are not so interesting as in the model. Oh, this is a missing... Yes, shit. And this is the most important one, so I will tell you this. What you will see in this slide is a sort of a metro um, map, map of metro uh, lines in different colors going like this, and then a lilac line going around, a circular line. And I wanted to show you this because some days ago I called the mayor on the telephone and tried to ask him how things were going. And he admitted that the city had been actually too slow in the realization process. But they were getting there, there was only problems on how to do it. His response raises again and again the eternal questions of if and how this kind of project at all are, uh, can be realized. Are they just a waste of time and money? Can they change anything? And this is why I wanted to show you the image that's not there, because it's the one image that's not realized in Sundbyberg. It is a new kind of strategic development plan so to speak, a recipe for a flexible and synchronized planning in a continuous but organized contact with local citizens. Because if you want a different result, you need to work in a different way. And it's drawn by the planner Peter Schulz Jorgensen, who greatly has contributed to my project. And his idea of this um, strategic plan is that he wanted to point out that you can actually plan for a, a continuous readjustment of everything that's happening in relation to a plan. So that the plan um, fits with the people and fits with the real life that it's supposed to fit into. Um, thank you very much.